Hi everybody. So doctors Jeremy Pettis, Bill Polonsky, Steve Edelman here with you. So as you know, Steve and I have been living with type 1 diabetes for many years. Bill is a behavioral diabetes psychologist and we're going to talk today about these crazy stories with diabetes that everybody experiences. You know, I've had type 1 for almost 30 years now and it's these moments that really stand out where just like things don't maybe go right that you really remember and that stick with you and that everybody has. So we thought it'd be great to tell a couple of these stories and actually, you know, act them out, kind of relive these moments um, that hopefully you guys can relate to. So we're going to start with Steve, you're telling the story and we're excited to hear what you're going to tell us. <laughs> I'm not excited to think about it again. <laughs> okay. I live about 15 minutes from the TCOID office. I get in my car like every other day. I drove to the office where we are right now. I parked the car. I walk up to the building. Because I was feeling a little bit low, I decided to take the elevator instead of walk up one flight of stairs, which I always do. I get in the elevator, the door closes, and I push the button in the elevator for the third floor. But as soon as I push the button, the lights in the elevator went off. Something is definitely wrong. <laughs> I pick up the emergency phone with a cord attached to it, completely dead. I then flip the emergency button, tons of loud noise, no one comes. I planned on eating something when I got to the office, which would have been one or two minutes, and then I realized my blood sugar was dropping. So I remember that Joe was in the office that day. I called him on my cell phone, and as soon as he picked up, I go, Joe, I'm stuck in the elevator. He rushes out to the elevator, starts pushing all the up and down buttons, thinking it would start it up or something. He ran to every single floor to push the button to see if that would get the elevator going, but it didn't. Joe then goes to the office manager who calls the elevator repair service. Joe runs back to the elevator and through the elevator door, I hear him say, they'll be there in about 30 minutes. So at this point, I'm getting really shaky, really sweaty, super weak, and pretty darn nervous. I go into my backpack. I pull out a little container of glucose tabs. I take off the lid. I go to dump the glucose tabs in my hand. It was completely empty. I used glucose tabs about three weeks earlier and never filled the container again. I tear into my backpack. I rifle through everything looking for something and all that was there was a bag of beef jerky. The single worst thing on this planet to raise your blood sugar. I eat it anyway because I had to have something. And at this time I was so weak I had to lay down on the floor of the elevator. I said to myself, is this how it's going to end for me? Am I going to have a seizure? Am I going to have brain damage? Is this going to be it? Just about all the worst thoughts running through my mind. But just as I was about to pass out, the elevator door opened and there was the repair guy. I was ecstatic that, to see him, but I really needed his help to get up and to walk to the office. But once I got to the office, I consumed at least a couple thousand calories. What did you eat? Oh, I had... <laughs> pretzel things, of course they taste good. Mm -hmm. I had chocolate bars, I had uh, uh, licorice sticks, I had a couple boxes of juice. I mean, I could not stop. <laughs> oh, that's a crazy story. Oh I'm so sorry. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about how this is literally like everybody with diabetes' worst nightmare. Like, you know, from the time I was diagnosed, like, you know, it sucks to get low, feels awful. And to be in a place where you can't get something is just horrible. And I can't imagine a worse demonstration of that than being stuck in an elevator when your blood sugar is going low. I mean, I would freak out. Well, I, you know what? I didn't freak out. Maybe that's just my personality, but I, at the time I didn't freak out, but I, later on when I thought about it, it took me a couple days to even text you and uh, Ian, you know, I just like, did that really happen? And I just thinking what could have happened. Right. And if, what if there was no cell coverage in there? Oh yeah. my gosh. I, I mean, I may have lost some brain cells, you know? So if I mess up today, you know why. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, did that stick with you? I mean, the next day or two, did you think, were you 
being a little bit more conservative with your boluses or did you not not really yeah but i'll tell you what i filled up my uh, glucose tap container it just made me uh, really a lot more conscious of always having something with me yeah. bill knows that you know they always my friends make fun of me because i've been caught without glucose a couple times you know and they uh steve didn't bring anything again remember that walk in canada sure do. everybody was freaking out because i was getting low i didn't have anything with me but we broke into a clubhouse of a golf course. And I got some soda there, but it made it, it made me take it, make it less funny. Yeah, it's not a joke. Yeah. And um, you know, thank God I had the Dexcom. Uh, I mean, at least I documented my death <laughs> or potential well, death. I think Bill would be good for you to talk about this because you know, I see all these patients that have had an episode like that or worse. You know, with seizures, like whatever. And they don't want their blood sugars to be anywhere close to low ever again. That they, you know, are maintaining blood sugars 180, 190, like, because that, that sticks with people. And I wouldn't be surprised if that, you know, you came in the next day and said, look, I just, you know, I'm going to ride at 180 from now on, you know, like, that's a scary event. And I know you see a lot of patients like that. So how do you yeah, deal with that? Sometimes just having an experience like that once right. actually leads to people for decades mm -hmm. keeping their blood sugars too high. You know, but I want to just mention that. Here we are sitting at taking control of your diabetes. Mm -hmm. And that if you're living with diabetes, you're still going to have times in your life where you are not in control of your diabetes. And that's such a good example of how this can happen, even to incredibly knowledgeable, skilled folks like you. And of course, it behooves us to think, well, what can you do to minimize those? But those events still happen. And they are kind of, well, funny, but they're super scary as well. But as you mentioned, yeah, there are, unfortunately... Um, a very high percentage of people who, who get so traumatized, it's sort of like a post-traumatic stress disorder, that they end up then just leaving their blood sugars super high all the time. And it's remarkable, that, of course, that it doesn't happen to everybody. It didn't happen to you. You know, just listening and talking about it, I remember, Jeremy, uh, I had a meeting, like, at the time I just got released from the elevator. And I, I don't remember meeting the guy. I don't remember what I said. And I did remember telling him what had just happened to well, me. He like, was here in the office? Yeah, he came into my office. I had just sat down. Okay. I had just consumed tons of stuff. I think it was a gentleman from one of the insulin pump companies. And I was total dog meat. I was just going, <laughs> I, sorry, I just. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I was in a daze for yeah. a while. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? It's um, every time I get in the elevator now, every time I think of that. And is that PTSD? I mean, I don't freak out, but I just, it brings back the memory and I say, <laughs> it reminds me, do I have stuff in my bag? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not PTSD. And it's smart, actually, right? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a smart reaction. You know, the people who freak out and then end up having high blood sugars all the time, what's happened to them is they've lost trust and confidence in their body and in their situations, right? That I don't think you've lost confidence in elevators. I don't well, think you lost bit. confidence in your <laughs> this, this <laughs> building. This is like a this, this building's like a cesspool, man. Don't right. ever rent here. <laughs> I take that. I take that back. But you haven't lost trust or confidence in yourself that you can handle those situations, and that's what's really important. Yes, yeah. that's, that's yeah. why that's why you're different. Yeah, I was, you know, I don't want to do the whole story, but I had one episode where I went on just like rafting down a river with friends. This is in college, and it was hot out and got super low. Didn't have anything with me. I had to park the raft on the side of the river, run up to some house we didn't know, knock on the door, you know, get soda, and thankfully, like, they were there. But that that stuck with me, too. Like, you know, now it's just, I, I still will forget things, but always having something with me. But I think it goes to show you that, you know, it happens to us, and we're not, you know, diabetes Jesus. Um, we're not perfect, I think, is the, the point, that if it can happen to us, it can happen to everybody. Um, but it does sound like you're dealing with some shame about it, or embarrassment well I, I would say any you know wasn't I'm not embarrassed that the elevator broke down but I would say that I'm a little embarrassed the fact I wasn't prepared when I tell people to be prepared almost every day of my life so yeah yeah it's uh, but you're right I mean we all mess up yeah but there's always gonna be situations like that or situations like yours right mm -hmm. like even on the river where you go I can't believe I don't have anything mm -hmm. with me right I mean it's guaranteed to happen to literally everybody. You want to minimize those. And as you said, you kind of sits with you as you move forward because there's a sense of, 
oh, you know, maybe there's times where I'm a little more vulnerable than I'd like to be. But can you be prepared for that in the future? That's what you guys are doing. But you know, you know what I have? Oh, sorry, Bill. No, no. I was going to say, what else I have in my backpack right now, besides the full container of glucose tabs, I got a GVOC hypo pen in my backpack. Just say, okay, boom. If I ever get in a situation, I can give it to myself. Yeah. Um, if I'm worried, I'm going to pass out. And um, it, it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking that, you know, all these little things that maybe we don't think about all the time, but I'm just realizing whenever I go to a movie theater or I book concert tickets or like to go see a Padres game or something, I always try to sit on the edge. Like I hate being in the middle mm. of any crowd because I want to be able to get out of there as soon as I can. Like if I need to get something because I'm low or whatever. Because that feeling of being trapped, I think, is like what I hate the most. Yeah. Like if you forgot something or whatever. Like I just like knowing where there's a soda machine if I don't have one and how I can get to it, all those kinds of things. The things that we think about all the time that we don't even really acknowledge that it's just going on just 24 seven of, you know, my high, my low, how do I deal with it, whatever, so. You hate being trapped, you, you. I would you, have hated that situation. Yeah, you, I don't you, know what I would have done. You would have done fine. I would have said, call 911 immediately. You would have called me. You, you were said you were gonna add something about, didn't you learn something about 911? Yeah, I, I learned, thank you. Yeah. The last thing I'll say is that uh, 911, Ambulance drivers have a special key that can open any elevator door, whether there's power or not. Really? So if I called 911, I should have. Yeah. Um, you know, that would have been a lot faster. It would have been a lot more wow. fun. Get up. You know what? I, 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 I was so um, out of it that usually I'm like videotaping myself for a story <laughs> like we're going to hear next. But um, you know what? I think it traumatized me more than I thought. Doing this show really brought it out. Thanks, guys. Now I got to go. <laughs> I got to go see a therapist. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. Yeah. All right. So now it's my turn to tell a story. But the good news is that my story is actually about Steve. So we're going to continue with our traumatization of our good friend Dr. Edelman. Um, but it's a great story that I just happened to be there for this one, so I can recall it for well, you all were, of you. You were traumatized from it. I was, and you guys are going to find out why. So let me take you back to a magical time known as 2016. A young Justin Bieber was tearing up the charts and America was just being introduced to stranger things. Anyways, the a Diabetes Educators Conference happened to be in San Diego that year. And there was this event happening at this nightclub, you know, after kind of one of the conference days was over, where they were bringing in these Dancing with the Stars yeah. actors to yep. dance and it was gonna be a fun event that Steve and I wanted to go. And um, so we couldn't just go straight to the bar or to the club, right? We had to be fashionably late. So before going to the club, we went to this bar across the street to meet our good friend, Aaron Kowalski, who's now the, the CEO of, of JDRF. And it's important to the story to know that we, we, we dressed up, you know? So I was, you know, doing my thing, trying to look nice. And important to the story, Steve was wearing a bright white kind of dress shirt and a sports coat over it. So we head to the bar, we walk in the door, and we see that Aaron is sitting at the bar waiting for us. So I say, sup, Aaron? What it is, Pettis, he says back. <laughs> so we do our customary handshake and order some beers. So we sit down at the bar, we each you know, order a beer, and the three of us start BSing about what's been going on in our lives. We hadn't seen Aaron in a while, so it was good to catch up, but everything was kind of normal and forgettable, to be honest, until Steve gets up and goes to the bathroom. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it until I got a call on my cell phone from Steve. Now, keep in mind, this is weird because I know that Steve's in the bathroom. So I'm thinking, why the hell is Steve calling me from the bathroom? So I, I pick up the phone and without even saying hello, Steve just says, Jeremy, come to the bathroom right now. I need your help. And I hang up the phone and I say to myself, this can't be good. So anyway, being the friend that I am, I, I polish off my beer first and then I head to the bathroom. So to set the scene, it's kind of a small bathroom. There's one sink, one urinal, and then one stall. And I come in and I look around and I, I, I don't see Steve anywhere. And then I, see, I hear uh, Steve's voice coming from the stall. He says, Jeremy, is that you? So I say, yeah, are you okay, Steve? And before I could even finish that question, he throws open the bathroom stall and my mouth just drops open. Holy shit. The bathroom stall is completely covered in blood. So Steve's shirt is completely off and he's holding the back of his arm. 
Jeremy, I got a bleeder, he says. Now keep in mind that a bleeder is not a thing that I have ever heard of in the diabetes world at all. And I'm seriously thinking that Steve has either been shot or stabbed. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, are, are you okay, Steve? What the hell is a bleeder? What is going on? So Steve answers none of my questions because he's too busy trying to film this with his phone. Jeremy, help me get a good angle, he says. Finally, I just can't take any more of this. And I say, Steve, stop. What the hell is going on? My pump, he says, I got a bleeder. So he finally takes his hand off his arm and I can see what he means. So he's taken off his Omnipod and must have hit like a small artery or something because there's literally blood shooting out of his arm. Oh crap, I say. But Steve, a bleeder is not a thing. Don't just stand there, he says, get me some paper towels. So for the next 10 minutes or so, I, I try to help Steve just clean the blood off of him. So Steve's white shirt is completely soaked in blood. So he takes it off and just wears his sports coat by itself like he's in Miami Vice or something. <laughs> so we come out of the bathroom and Steve walks right up to the bartender and says, I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a lot of blood in the bathroom. <laughs> and of course that didn't go over well at all. So we had to explain to the whole bar staff what had happened and thankfully they were actually super cool about it and were really nice. So did we call it a night? <laughs> of course not. We walked right across the street to the club and keep in mind, Steve doesn't have a shirt on, Mr. Miami Vice here, and we danced the night away. Had a great night. <laughs> so th that's my story about Steve. And you know, it's important to say that, you know, never before or after this event have I ever heard of anything like this happening. I mean, it's just a crazy story. And that's why when we're thinking about, you know, kind of crazy stories to tell, this one came to mind. And I think the point is is that you never know what to expect from diabetes and this was a, like an extreme example of that um but it can throw you curveballs and you have a great attitude about it i mean like i mean he was literally filming this when it was happening just to show people like how crazy this was i'll add one more thing to that story i went in the bathroom to change my omnipod like you said and i didn't know anything was wrong until my hands were wet i felt things dripping down my arm and I looked down there and blood is just dripping wow. off. Wow. And then I saw it squirting out and I said, what a great photo op. <laughs> so it didn't, I'm a doctor, I see blood all the time, but if, I think it just shocked Jeremy because he just went in the bathroom to take a leak and <laughs> next thing I know he's calling me for what? <laughs> and, well, you know, I think I gotta say I'm impressed because if that had happened to me, I, I don't know what I would have done. I would probably called you for help, bandaged it up and I definitely would have gone home. So like kudos to Steve for having a great attitude about it. Like, hey, this isn't gonna stop my night. And I think that there's some, a message there and about how you live your life with diabetes in general. You don't let it get to you too much. Well, and keeping such perspective that it's like, oh, this is so cool, I have to film Yeah, it. just I'm that like, would wow. not have gone through my head. <laughs> you know, that's just... well, I don't know anybody for whom that would do. <laughs> yeah. that's, and again, it's sort of this keeping perspective, right? Mm -hmm. As crazy as that is, even you thought that was crazy enough to say, oh, I have to memorialize this, right? I mean. And as you said, you know, these, I think this is great. We're talking about this, right? Because crazy stuff's going to happen to everybody. And it's, you know, or you, want, you want to let everyone know that that's normal, mm -hmm. right? And you want to have them keep perspective that as good a job as you guys both do, and as so many people are trying to do to manage diabetes effectively, I think you said the word perfectly. You want to be, to know the curveballs are going to happen. Mm -hmm. You do your best to be prepared for them. And you laugh when you can, because why not? Yeah. We'll, we'll get through this together. And I think and, and having somebody else to talk to about it is, is huge because you guys might not be able to relate to that story, but you can certainly relate to a time that diabetes made you have to leave something you're at, a party, whatever, because something happened. It happens to all of us. And, and to be honest, so those are the times generally that I am the most frustrated with diabetes and I'm doing something, something crazy happens and I have to stop doing the thing that I like to be doing. And that's when I get upset that I have diabetes. Um, so again, I'm just really impressed, Steve, that the, it just didn't get in your way. Um, you know, I should I should tell everybody that it never happened before that time. Yeah. And it's never happened since that time. So I still don't understand how you can get a little artery that superficial, mm -hmm. but it was a squirter for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember when, when you gave grand rounds and you got low in the middle of your talk. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about that, yeah. That was, I was embarrassed for you, but even though there's no reason to be embarrassed. Yeah. So di that, I just thought of that when you said, you know, diabetes just messes up your plan sometimes. Yeah. You know? 
And well, especially for about lows, you know, where lows can happen, like like when you're giving grand rounds, or yeah. certainly so many stories I've heard from so many, you guys and so many other folks where, and I think you, again, you said it well, it's usually when it messes up something you're doing. Right? Yeah. Uh, for a hike, I'm doing something else. It's annoying. Well, thanks for sharing two of your stories. We Our job was for him to share one about him and wanting me to share one about me, but I couldn't help but share another one about Steve, so... Thanks for being our guinea pigs for this. You know what? Um, it's been my pleasure, and I see my therapist tomorrow, so it's all, <laughs> it's all good. So, you know, if you guys have stories that you want to share, please type them in the comments. We love hearing from you guys. But we saved this part for the end because the, the footage that Steve filmed when this, you know, issue was happening with his arm, we have that video, which we're going to show now. And it is a little graphic because it's shooting blood. So if you don't want to watch it, maybe it's a good time to turn this off or, you know, turn your screen down or whatever. But without further ado, here is Steve in a dingy bathroom in downtown San Diego <laughs> with this pump issue. 3 a.m. Pulled out my pulled out my Omnipod. Look at that! It, the blood is squirting so far from my arm. Look what it did to my shirt. Oh my God! It's still squirting out. Look at that. I've never had that happen in my life. Oh, oh shit. 